Hi everyone, it's Baldrick here and welcome to my review of the MSI 950. So it's got two gigs of VRAM, it's got the twin throws of five cooler on it and it just looks really good with its red and black theme. I've never seen such a nice looking red and black graphics card, mainly because this is the third graphics card I've ever reviewed. Anyway, uh, let's get on to what you get in the box. So you get a DVI2 VGA adapter, you also get a user's guide and you get a driver and obviously you get the graphics card and the box that comes with it. As for the PCB, it looks really neat. One of the nicest looking PCBs I've ever seen. It's got a few stickers on it. They look pretty decent as well. I can't really complain with a PCB. I could say it would be cool if it had a backplate, but the PCB is so neat that I don't really think it even needs one as it wouldn't really benefit the card in any way, apart from driving the cost up. And especially for a 950 that runs really cool, you don't need it anyway. As for the power, you just need a 6 pin, it's also got a nicer light that glows when you plug it into your system and you can configure that, I'll talk about that later. So on the back of the graphics card you get 3 display ports, 1 HDMI and 1 DVI connector, enough to keep you satisfied for all your monitors and it supports resolutions up to 4K which is really good to see on the DVI, and well, not the DVI, the display port. Anyway, uh, now let's get onto the benchmarks. Alright, let's get on to the technical side of review now. So basically the card, uh, if you download the appropriate MSI gaming software, you can actually configure the lighting, which is really cool. You can see a little clip up here of me doing that. But apart from that, what you can see in the gameplay is what the graphics card is getting overclocked while playing on Ultra on Battlefield 4 Dawnbreaker. Keep in mind Dawnbreaker is a very easy map to run on Battlefield 4 compared to most of the others. Whereas in the benchmarks, if you saw the Battlefield 4 Ultra FPS average was about 30 something, so that is a much more demanding map which was done on Paracel Storm, so that's why the FPS is so different, plus this is overclocked, so it was running on overclocked mode. That's another thing, this graphics card overclocks like a beast, I got plus 600 on the memory and plus 190 on the core, giving it a really decent boost clock of about 1500 MHz, which is just absolutely balling for a graphics card like. I've never been able to hit that on my 780 Ti, but that 780 Ti's aren't good overclockers anyway, but for a Maxwell it is sort of expected to get these awesome overclocks, but that only gives you about 10-ish 
FPS more in general, so it is worth overclocking as the temps don't even get hot, it's only a few degrees hotter. So I really recommend you overclock this graphics card. If you're not, I'm not it doesn't really matter, but that 10 FPS with this lower end tier card can really make a difference. Another thing I'd like to talk about is its SLI capability. I wouldn't recommend SLIing this card, but if you do find it for a really good price somewhere, maybe in the future, then it could be a really cool option. But unfortunately, a lot of motherboards don't support SLI, especially mine, which kind of sucks. But yeah, you're going to run into issues if your motherboard doesn't support SLI and you want to do SLI. It may look like it can, but trust me, some of them can't. Anyway, that's not the graphics card's fault. Plus, uh, a lot of games aren't optimized for SLI anyway, so you wouldn't want to have two 950s in SLI. That's just my recommendation, but unless you get a really good price on them. Another thing I'd like to talk about is just the raw noise this graphics card outputs. When you're on idle, it doesn't even have its fan spin, so you can't even hear it in the system, which is great. And when you do play games, it's still really silent, so that's really cool. I didn't really notice the fan kicking maybe a teeny bit, but to be honest, I never really noticed it because my system's water-cooled and it never went above the water-cooling noise, which is really awesome. And compared to the R7 360 that I reviewed, this is a much quieter card, mainly because of its beast cooler. So would I recommend this card to you guys? I absolutely would, only if you can get it for a good price. Currently in Australia, it was $270 for me to get it, which is a bit of a ripoff of the performance you're getting. I would recommend paying a bit more and get a 960. It's a more beefy graphics card. It's a bit better and it might be worth spending that extra bit of money. But if you can find this for a reasonably good price compared to the other graphics cards, then I would recommend pick it, picking it up. Also, make sure you get the MSI cooler, the one I've got, just because it's so quiet, it performs so well, and I was so happy with it. I cannot stress enough how quiet this graphics card is and how power efficient it is. Like, it compared to what I was used to with my 780 Ti, you have to have two 8 pins in it, it's ridiculous. This just takes one 6 pin, overclocks like a beast. I didn't even notice any coil wire, nothing wrong with it, it's all perfect, and I didn't run into any issues with using this graphics card. So, I really recommend it. Uh, if you want to get it as a physics processor for a beefier card, you can also do that instead of SLIing it. That could be a good alternative for getting this card. And yeah, that's really about it. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. I hope you enjoyed the review. And please tell me in the comments below if you want to see any more reviews because I may be able to actually do it. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Tell me in the comments uh, what you thought of this review and see you later.